Welcome to the Biz Bash podcast, where we make biz strategy a piece of cake. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Cammie, but you might know us better as Eliza and Calligraphy and Cammie Monet. We want to help you, our fellow stationers, artists, and calligraphers, confidently build a profitable and personality-driven creative biz. We're here to share our honest-to-goodness advice and actionable strategies for ambitious artists. So put on your party hat, quit being a procrastinator gator, and let's get this party started. Hey y'all, welcome back for episode 56 of the Biz Bash podcast. Today we are talking about when is it okay to quit and yikes, like who ever thought we would make a podcast episode about quitting? The good news is we're not quitting the podcast or anything crazy like that and sorry if the title scared any of you this morning. Rather, this episode is about when it's okay to cut things out of your life or use the dreaded word quit. Recently, I, this is Elizabeth, by the way, quit something I was a part of, and I'm not going to lie, it totally made me feel like a failure in some ways, even though I was confident about the reasons I wanted to stop doing it. And in fact, a big part of the reason I made that decision was for my own mental health. Anyways, Cammie and I want to spend some time dissolving the stigma surrounding the fact that quitters are always losers or that quitting is always a bad thing because sometimes it's best to move on and decide to quit something. And if you think about it, It's way worse to half-ass something, pardon my French, (laughs) or stick with something way too long than to actually (laughs) cut ties and stop doing it. So we're going to both discuss instances today when we've quit something in the past, why we've made that decision, as well as outline some reasons when it is okay to quit something. And we know, we know everything is about the hustle today, but sometimes taking a step back is what counts and matters in the long run. So without further ado... We are going to do like a overview of times we have quit in our life as in like our whole lifetime. So some of this like dates back to elementary school. (laughs) Our whole lifetime. (laughs) I love how we always have like stuff from our childhood that sneaks Um, into this, but it's it's so fun. (laughs) Anyways, yeah, I can remember pretty well like the instances when I really like thoughtfully quit something or stop doing something especially because like yeah the whole like don't be a quitter especially like growing up and stuff that was like always a big thing I don't know about you Cammie like whether or not you heard that tossed around but I definitely did yeah for sure and I think some of mine are more from like when I was younger too because as I've gotten older I just don't like if something is not like I'm not like 150% in I just don't do it (laughs) like I'm very like selective so I don't feel like I have to quit as much you know so I feel like you're gonna have more insight on this topic if that if does that make sense you know where I'm like okay well I'm not really quitting that much right now because I'm not doing anything that I like feel like I need to quit yes yeah and I would say that I only have like one super recent one where I'm like, I have to make a conscious decision to quit doing this. Yes. Um, Because a lot of like my old ones are from like examples from like elementary, high school and college. <laughs> and then like a couple like early things like in my, my marriage years, I guess I would say that phase of life the past like four years. Yes. Also on the topic of quitting. <laughs> Have you ever seen that commercial where it's like, I think it's like Shantex or Shantix or something, but it's like quitting smoking and it's got the turkey and it's like, why well, quit cold turkey when you can quit, quit slow turkey? And it's like the turkey like going on walks and like reading books. <laughs> and I love that commercial so much. I'm like, Alex, that's me as the turkey. He's wearing his little boots and he's got his little vest on. He's just like having a great time. Like I freaking love that turkey. <laughs> the slow turkey. It sounds so familiar. Like, I bet I have seen it if I was to pull it up. Oh, yeah. Just, like, type in slow turkey. Like, oh, there he is. <laughs> He's so cute. I Hold love him. I'm going to look him up. <laughs> um. Anyway, he makes me really happy. The little- yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen this one. I guess I didn't even realize it was had something to do with smoking. Yeah. Okay. If you like click on images when you Google it and you see him when he's wearing his little beanie and his little vest and like little boots when he goes camping, Alex is like, that turkey looks oh exactly gosh, like you I've when we go snowboarding. I'm like, so oh, funny. No. He is very cute. He's much cuter than like a real life turkey. Yeah. He's super cute <laughs> and just like his little antics are adorable. So, anyway, I love the slow turkey. So. <laughs> I had to bring him up. I know that was pretty darn cute. Making lemonade—that is too cute. Oh my goodness! Yes. So, 
I will go ahead and start with one of the things I quit in my life. Um, <laughs> this is a very, very a intense funny story, though, because <laughs> I think I was like in third grade or so when I quit Girl Scouts. And I hadn't even, gosh, been a part of it for like that long, maybe like a year or two. I'd have to ask my mom because I might be miss remembering like I might have not even like made it through a year I don't even know like I don't think I even understood what was going on half of the time I was such like a daydreamy kind of kid that this whole like doing different things to like check things off a list and like earn patches and stuff was so like beyond me at that point in my life I don't know I feel like you would love that now like checking things off a list and like earning little things for each thing you did (laughs) I don't know because like that's a lot of how like power core ran and yet that like didn't work for me. So I don't know. It might be when somebody else like instills that in place of like the checking like that it's an organization or something I'm part of where I have to do something that it makes it less appealing for me because I just like wanted to do my own thing. You're just like, I'm not doing that. I remember my excuse for this very clearly because I was like really young at the time And told my mom, I just don't have time for this, which is hilarious because, like, what elementary school kid (laughs) doesn't have time to do, like, Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts when that was, like, literally one of the few extracurricular things at the time that I did. (laughs) That is amazing. That is the cutest thing. I just imagine little Elizabeth being like, I just don't have the time right now, mom. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And honestly, like, I think a lot of the big part of it was like the social part of it is like, I didn't feel like I was really like a part of that group, you know, like a part of the troop. I kind of like felt like the outsider and Mm -hmm. like, I've always been introverted. And so I guess looking back at it through that lens, it would make more sense too of like, I didn't want to like be required to like be with these people all the time. <laughs> oh, that just made me really think of something else that I quit later on in life. <laughs> so I can talk about that later. Well, good. Oh, I forgot all things that I quit. I actually, when I was a little kid and I was in Girl Scouts or whatever, I was just so competitive about selling the cookies. Like I had to sell more than anyone else. And like, I always just like lost my mind over selling cookies. So <laughs> like, would be so intense about selling cookies. Like we'd just go out to people at like the high school football games, like a little kid and just be like, do you want to buy a cookie? Here's how they buy the cookie boxes or whatever. Cause I really wanted to earn this baseball hat. That was like a plaid <laughs> flannel baseball hat. And I earned it. So, <laughs> so I always sold the most cookies. You guys, that was the best. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're so funny. Yeah. I mean, I remember selling the girl scout cookies for sure. And selling like wrapping paper in elementary school too did you do those fundraisers oh my gosh oh yeah and wrapping paper cookie dough uh candy bars I mean we did so many fundraisers as little kids like that probably honestly helped me so much today like now that I'm thinking about it like it makes me wonder though I'm so curious like what percentage of those sales like the schools even got like what was like the kickback for the school was it that good yeah I don't know. I have no idea. It had to be fairly good um, if they implemented it. Yeah. Right. For them to subject all of their students to doing it. Oh, those were the days like the 90s, mm-hmm. early like 2000s, yeah. man. Like, I don't even know what, what do kids even do anymore? Yeah. Like, do they do fundraisers? Like, our school, it was like each class, like it was like K through eight, and each class was like, they like all competed against each other to raise the most money and each class had like a king and queen and those were like the two kids or whatever normally mostly the parents who like spearheaded all the fundraising efforts and like my class like when we finally we won our for like one year when I was like when I was queen it was like fourth grade it wasn't like a big deal it wasn't like prom queen or anything like that but then our class like won every single year after that we like blew everyone out of the water and then every, all the other classrooms would get so mad they're like how do they make so much money because like we all like just figured out a system like it was oh my just gosh yeah I do remember but- like the classes having competitions and then especially like we also did like canned food drives and I remember that yeah. being a big thing too like which class brought in the most yeah and, like, pulling my wagon around the neighborhood to get, like, canned goods from the neighbors and stuff. 
Oh, man. So, yeah, that was, like, the first thing I remember in my life that I truly made, like, the decision to quit. Um, <laughs> I didn't I did not want to do it anymore. So what's your first one you can remember? The first one I really remember is, like, a big moment of quitting. It's just, <laughs> like, stories of our lives at this point. I don't even know. Um, so senior year of high school, I basically just decided I wanted to quit everything because I was doing, like, some like college classes on the side and I was like I just want to have free time I'm always going to like stuff I just want to take these college classes early and uh, they were all criminal justice classes by the way like because I thought I wanted to work in a jail as like a disciplinary (laughs) person which is the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life but anyways I took all these criminal justice classes and I quit clogging which I was like I was a dancer and a clogger for like my entire life and my senior year which is like the year you get honored and like for being with it for so long, that's the year I quit. Everyone was like mind boggled that I quit like right before like all the, I don't know, uh-huh. like the culmination of everything. And then I also quit color guard because they promoted me to captain of the color guard. And I was like, I don't want to do this too much responsibility. So I peaced out. And basically I had like no extracurricular activities in my senior year because I just quit them all. Cause I was like, I never have had free time. So the only thing I did was play tennis, obviously it's <laughs> a pop, but um anyway that's all I really remember quitting because I also was just like really annoyed by having to be at things all the time and I was just like I was like it's time for me to grow up and do more important things like criminal justice classes and have free time to go snowboarding when I want and blah 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 like (laughs) anyway thought I was such a rebel (laughs) oh my gosh you're so funny but that probably was so nice like you knew where your priorities were that's like a perfect example of like being empowered to do what you want. Even at that age, I'm impressed. Yeah, I mean, it was weird because it it was like the end of an era almost of all these things I had like done my whole life. And everyone was like, why? You just need one more year to like, I don't know, like become to the top level. Like, why would you not just finish it all the way through, you know, like all the way to the end? Yeah, it's those times. It's those times I feel like when there's kind of like a timestamp on something that makes it the hardest to choose whether or not you're going to leave. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, if you have one more year, you actually finish the thing or whatever. And it's like, nope, I can't even do that. I don't even want to do that. So Yeah, actually, it cracks me up because Amy Porterfield and Rachel Hollis were like on, I think it was Amy's podcast together. (laughs) And Rachel talked about how she like had joined some college class for like accounting, I think. And I think she said she did like three or four weeks and was like, I'm out. Like, this was a mistake. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is no good this is no good <laughs> uh, yeah but those ones like yeah those are tough well I remember okay so I remember that I like did quit something because the time had like passed basically okay so like my mom really wanted all of us to do piano lessons through eighth grade and I'm pretty sure we all did so I'm the oldest of five That's a lot of piano playing in our house at all times because we were supposed to practice like 30 minutes a day. Um, So between (laughs) five of us, that's like two and a half hours. (laughs) We would literally have to like, yeah, like schedule who was going to like practice at what time or like we would claim spots or whatever. But eighth grade was like the last year. So after eighth grade, I was like, I'm out. I'm done. Like because that had been like a requirement. Yeah. Yeah. But the funny thing was that I actually came back of my own free will. I think it was like my last year of high school because I was the the piano accompanist. I can never say that word right. But I was the accompanist for the Coralettes, which was like the women's like higher singing group at our school. And so I wanted my piano teacher was the same piano teacher I always had to like help me through that year. So I took one more year with her and... Honestly, like I've been told Will lately, like I've been tempted to like buy a keyboard or something that I could plug headphones into and still like practice and play. (laughs) That is so cool. I didn't even know you played piano. So I'm like, oh my gosh, if I knew how to play piano, I'd practice all the freaking time. I think that is so neat. (laughs) Yeah, I miss it. It's fun when we get home as a family because I'll like sit down with my siblings and kind of like play the piano and play a couple songs and do whatever. Well, aren't y'all just a Hallmark movie over there being all cute, playing the piano, singing Christmas carols? <laughs> I know, we're so cute. But that was like an example of like, I stopped something because I had fulfilled the requirement, basically. Mm-hmm. But 
Yeah, because I didn't like, I guess I, for all those years, didn't really get to make my own choice. But then I came back to it. So it's kind of like a sweet story. It's like a, a quitting it almost made me realize that like I still wanted it to be part of my life. <laughs> like I got to make my own decision. <laughs> yes, exactly. You decided for yourself that you wanted it to be a part of it instead of it just being a requirement. Yes. Mm hmm. Are you ready to push the envelope in your stationary biz and finally get the answers you're looking for? We're bringing together industry leaders in one place with a virtual conference anyone can attend. The Stationer Summit is an online game changer with session topics that are for stationers by stationers. And with 18 different educators, you can't afford to miss this. We've got all the names you love, such as Swell Press, Design House of Mora, Papel & Co, Design by Laney, and so many others. And you guys, they are here to bring you the answers you can't get anywhere else. It's time to break down the walls of the stationary industry and open the door for anyone and everyone. We believe there is room for all of us at the table and we're offering you a virtual seat. And of course, we'll be there too, talking about everyone's favorite topic, pricing for custom stationery. During 2020, registration for the Stationer Summit will be opening twice at the price of $4.97. This includes all the educator sessions as well as additional Q&A educator recordings that have been added to the student portal. Join the 900 plus students that have already signed up for the summit. Visit stationersummit.com for more information on registration dates and to get on the waiting list. Okay, well, when you talked about quitting Girl Scouts because you were an introvert or whatever, this made me think of me quitting my sorority after two years in. Not necessarily because I'm an introvert, uh, mostly because I just, I didn't like being told what to do. <laughs> yeah, I can get that. And uh, yeah, so I'd be like, okay, um, you, you're like required to come help this like fraternity with the homecoming float, we all have to come in and pomp the stuff like pomp. Okay. I hate that word because it's like, you got to crinkle up this paper and make this homecoming float. That was really, <laughs> this is really the straw that broke the camel's back for me. That's why it's like so burned in my brain, but they always wanted me to come do that. And they'd be like, you need to put in like two hours a week or whatever. And I was like, I'm not going over there and freaking making a homecoming float. Like this is stupid. Like I am here to like get some education at this college. I'm like, I'm busy. I'm studying. They'd be like, you have to get the two hours or you get like fined if you didn't like do all these different things. And I would just like, I didn't want to do those things. <laughs> I just want to do them. And like, I wouldn't pay the fines either. And like, I just, anyway, I just didn't want to do all these requirement things. I had fun like hanging out with everyone, but I, <laughs> it's just so, I don't know, like something dumb, yeah. like a homecoming float I just wasn't into. So after two years, I was like, you know what? this isn't for me. I still have like, they're still my friends and I can still hang out with them. I don't need to be like going to these meetings and I don't know, having all these like scheduled things when I'm in college. And I really like, I was such a, I just yeah. really wanted to like study in the library. Like that's literally like what I loved doing in college. Like I was, loved it. I loved drinking like 14 cups of coffee and like just making my little like space in the library. And I didn't want to go do all these things. So I quit because of that. So yeah, when there's too much like pressure to do things where it conflicts with something where I'm like, my heart is yeah. not really into this. I want to be doing this instead. Yeah. That's when I know, okay, it's time for me to quit. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's how I felt about Girl Scouts, even though I was much younger at the time. I was like, I don't want to do clean up the leaves <laughs> for two hours yeah. to earn my like leave patch. I don't care about this. Like, I don't want to be forced to do something I don't want to do. Kudos yeah. though to people who like, are good followers because I feel like that is a special skill like being able to like dedicate time and being part of these things that are like group societies you know because I would have to say I agree with you Cami mm -hmm. like I've never been good at that at being like told what to do ever um and I think there's instances where it's like good to have that skill because <laughs> I get like really like stubborn headed about things yeah. or I'm like no it should be done this way or why are we doing it this way when like sometimes it would be better for me to have a more more of a servant's heart I hate using that phrase but <laughs> 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 oh yeah yeah 
I know. I, there was also this one time where I got in trouble and they were supposed to find me because I started a snowball fight in my bikini oh. on campus and they were like, that is <laughs> not classy gosh. lady behavior. I'm like, but everyone else is drinking. <laughs> okay. I'm just having a fun time over here. I really do think <gasps> college oh. Cammy and I would have been like such great friends even. Like even knowing our college shelves, I'm like, I would have been friends <laughs> with you for sure. That would have been like, that would have happened. But it is so crazy to think about that when you were, okay, what year did you graduate um, high school? 2008. Yeah, that was like the year you graduated was the year I was like entering high school. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Because four years now doesn't feel like a lot, but in the like elementary, middle, high school phase, it's forever. Yeah, it's a lot. Like, I remember when one of the girls um, was, like, a freshman girl was dating a senior and everyone was like, <gasps> that was so dramatic, you know? Like, whereas now if you date someone who's, like, three years older, it literally doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not a big deal at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I get it. I get why it was a big deal at the time. Okay, so my next thing that I quit was also that it was, like, more of a life transition. So I played softball, like baseball and or softball pretty much my entire life. And also like just did a lot of things like choir and theater and stuff that were built into my high school life that it wasn't necessarily like an I quit this situation, but like I stopped doing something I enjoyed because like that chapter of my life closed. Mm-hmm. So it's like I didn't put, you know, I wasn't going to look at colleges that had softball teams. I wasn't going to look at colleges with like a good theater program because I didn't care about continuing those things in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But it it doesn't mean that I wasn't like sad about it, which is why I still I still view it as like an I quit situation because it's like I did in a way have to quit it, but not by my like own choice it was just a part of life yeah it was like a bittersweet like ending of a chapter you know just like oh yes this is good and now it's time to move on kind of thing which like can totally be a quitting situation you know something in your business too where you're like I really love doing this but it's not serving my business the way it needs to right now so I'm gonna have to just let it go and it's kind of sad and bittersweet but <laughs> it's kind of like when you you know when Marie Kondo says like you think the thing you love like thank you to this shirt or whatever. And then you get rid of it and it's fine. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you move past those different things. And so that's another one. of my, That's one of my like bittersweet ones. <laughs> yes. Okay. This one, this one, it really isn't quitting either, but I was trying to come up with examples. <laughs> and so this is kind of like, I'm not really sure what happened here, but I, it's kind of funny. So I worked at Victoria's Secret for like, probably like, actually like 10 days, maybe like less than that. Anyway, so I worked there for like 10 days and I didn't really quit, but they also never put me back on the schedule. And I never like called to check if I was supposed to be on the schedule. And literally, I don't even know what happened. Like I never quit. They never fired me. Nothing ever happened. I just worked like three times at the store for like a period of 10 days. And then that was it. And so I don't know if I like ever actually quit or not. There was no clear ending. So anyway, I could still be on like their employee list. I don't know. I'm so confused. Wait, so they like you had an interview and they gave you the job. Yeah. And then I worked like three full days. Like I went, I did the training and then I did the thing where you like set the store up at night and like fold underwear. And then I worked like one other day. This was like, and this was literally like a period of like a week. And then they never like put me back on the schedule after that or (laughs) what it sounds like that sounds like a total like mistake or misunderstanding but that's so funny I know probably but it was fine because I was like I don't really want to do this either so it kind of just like like faded out which I know is like very unusual so something went wrong (laughs) I didn't actually quit but it was like I kind (laughs) of I wanted to quit so it all worked out (laughs) like like I said, super random, and I'm not really sure what that means, but they ghosted me. They ghosted me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Was that in college? Yeah. And all I really wanted was to get a free bra. I was like, if I work for a month, you get a free bra in a month. And I was like, so I just need to work for a month. And then, yeah, just faded out to nothingness. So, Westtown Mall in Knoxville, Victoria's Secret, <laughs> if you still have me on there, 
Also, like, if you wanted a bra that bad, just go buy one. It's not worth your time to work a month. Jeez. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed really exciting. I was like, I'm just going to go out and get a job. Like, I'm just going to go get a job. My parents are like, what are you doing? I'm like, I just thought it'd be fun to go get a job. <laughs> like, I literally just, I don't know, just felt like trying it out. <laughs> I remember a couple of the girls we knew from church in High school or like college, late high school or college worked in Victoria's Secret. And my parents were like, because <laughs> <laughs> it's Victoria's Secret. <laughs> I was like, it's just underwear. It's fine. Anyways, that was not needed, but <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Okay. I have another, I have a college quitting story. So I worked at Barnes and Noble and is it Barnes it's Barnes and Nobles plural right I thought it was just Barnes and Nobles singular yeah Barnes and Noble gosh I always mess it up whatever I worked there for three months my sophomore year of college and then like quit like straight up quit and I remember it very clearly so I worked between they rotated me in the store so the Seattle store downtown has like two levels Actually, a lot of Barnes and Nobles have two levels. And like the upper level was like the magazines and travel area. And the lower level was where all the books and the other things were as well as the cafe. So I kind of got like rotated between these three places, upper level, lower level, like cashier, and then the cafe, um, which I was so bad at. And this is like very funny because like I tried being a barista. My mom has been a barista and my brother has been a barista and we've all been really bad at it. So clearly like something about that skill does not run in the family. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I also like, I hated that when I was doing the cashier, you wouldn't like think of this until you're in the position, but you get to see like all the stuff people buy, which can be really sad because I would have like couples come up to me and buy books about divorce or how to handle divorce with kids. And you get like weird personal insights into people's lives based on what they're reading, which like makes sense. Yeah. And so it's like, I could deal with that part, but it like bummed me out. But I also hated that they tried to make me like sell the $25 a year Barnes and Noble like membership, you know, they like force you to ask every person if they have it and you get Mm -hmm. some sort of little, I can't remember if there's an incentive involved for us to try to sell them, but it's like, we, we kind of had a quota of like, they wanted us to sell a certain amount. And I just hated the managers like watching to see if I was doing that. (laughs) Gosh. And the whole thinking about the whole thing just like gives me just the heebie-jeebies. Anyways, so like here was the breaking point for me. (laughs) The worst part was like actually working in the magazine section because they, mm, how do I say this? Like (laughs) they sold like, they sold Playboy and stuff like that. (laughs) Things that you like, I didn't even realize that Barnes and Noble sold and it was in like a certain part. And so then it would be really awkward for me if like I'm this college age student and like, gentlemen or whoever are buying these magazines full of like naked women oh my gosh I never even like thought about this working at a bookstore (laughs) yes it was awful and then here was like one of like the breaking moments for me was there was like it's probably like 70 year old lady who came up to me and bought the sports illustrated swimsuit version and I was like Oh, I I made like some comment about it or whatever. And I was like, enjoy your magazine. Like, what are you supposed Mm -hmm. to say to that? She was like, oh, this isn't for me. It's for my husband. (laughs) And I was like, I just kind of like wanted to die of it. Because I was like, okay, so you both are 70, but you're buying a magazine full of like 20 year old swimsuit models, like for your husband. I was like, wait, I'm just so confused. Like, and so I think... (laughs) For me, from like a moral standpoint, I couldn't handle it. It was too weird. Like I didn't like seeing what people were buying and why they were buying it and who they were buying it for. And I was like, nope, (laughs) I'm out. I'm not doing this. Oh my gosh. See, I think that would be so fascinating to see what people are buying. Like I would be like, because I'm such a creeper. I would love it. (laughs) 
<laughs> I would love to know what people are buying. Like, I think that's really interesting, but that is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, like most of the time it was like fine, you know, but I remember so specifically those instances where I was like, oh, this is okay. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I was just like, embarrassed or like put off or you know it's their life choices but still like (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) so yeah I like quit that almost pretty much like from a moral standpoint and the fact that like I was so bad at working in the cafe I was so bad at it and so it was like kind of like mortifying every time they put me in that position and I was like well here we go like I'm just gonna look like an idiot for the next two or three hours so yeah yeah um my next one is this is like the one where I genuinely am like okay I'm old I'm old now and like this is like truly me quitting something yes. not like you know being in Girl Scouts or whatever like we talked about so when I graduated college I worked um at Scripps Networks which is um HGTV DIY Network Travel Channel all those I worked there and I loved my job you guys I loved working there I worked with the best people my job was so much fun so many cool opportunities got to do all kinds of cool stuff But I knew like my ultimate career goal was that I really wanted a career in travel journalism and I wanted to work for a travel magazine. Like that was like my dream job. Like I wanted to make that happen. And so uh, when I had the opportunity to pursue that career in travel journalism and I had to leave my job at Scripps Networks, I was so sad. I'm like getting all like emotional thinking about it. Like it really was such a fun job. Aww. Um, so I had to quit that and move on to something else. And I, I know it like seemed really crazy at the time because it was like a good paying job, like very stable, like easy to move up in the company. And I was quitting to like go be a travel journalist. And like the position that they created for me at the travel magazine was literally like an internship that they just like made up just for me because I annoyed them all the time. <laughs> and they were finally like, why don't you just come down? <laughs> okay, we'll just see what happens. And that's why I moved to Florida. So I literally left my good paying job to go pursue this internship that wasn't really an internship because I had graduated. (laughs) But it did turn into a full time role after like three months um, with them. So it was like a total like risk of quitting. Like it was like quitting for a risk Like there wasn't any kind of like, oh, this is gonna this is a big neck, like a next step, like a vertical step. It was like a step down to like go to where I wanted to go. Um, But all worked out. But it was just it was hard to quit because I really did love it. And that meant I also would leave, you know, Tennessee and move. So it was like this huge quitting decision that was like a turning point in my life. And yeah, and I did get to work at the travel magazine. I freaking had the best time ever. And then I met my husband here. And now here I am. So it all worked out great. Like I think about like, that was like such a pivotal moment of that quitting. And like, none of this would have ever happened if I had stayed in that position, you know, like if I had stayed there and not taken the made the choice to quit and like, pursue something that I was really passionate, really, really passionate about and not just like having fun at, um, then I wouldn't even like have this, like, this career of being an artist because I wouldn't have gotten laid off my other magazine job. So like, there's just so many things. But anyway. Well, yeah. And you never would have met Alex. I feel like you were supposed to be in Florida, mainly to meet Alex and to do what you're doing now. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. So it's just like, oh, it's, cra- it's like one of the craziest turning points in my life. <laughs> Yeah, that I always forget that element of the story that you like had something you loved so much. Yeah, it wasn't like I hated it. I don't know if I would have had the guts to leave. Yeah, it, it was really difficult. Like I loved my job. I loved my apartment. I loved where I lived. Like I loved everything about what I was doing. So I was just like, okay, I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> like, let's see what happens. You're so crazy. But you did it. I am crazy. <laughs> So I have now I have another job quitting one around. Well, this would have happened like right before I went full time because like to go full time, I quit a job and Cammie got laid off. Um, And we talk about that story in in one of our other episodes. I think our like how to go full time episode, right? Yeah, we kind of like talk about the story behind things. So yeah. So yeah, I was working at this like real estate boutique in Marietta Square, which by the way, Cammie, this is crazy. Like the woman I worked for doesn't even, she doesn't own it anymore. I think she sold it to a- Oh, I think you told me about this. Yeah. Yeah. She sold it to like a bigger Atlanta brokerage. And so her name's like not attached to it anymore or anything. So yeah, that was kind of like crazy. That just happened in the past like year or so. And I mean, because I see that place all the time because I'm always on Marietta Square. But 
It was the perfect job for the first year because Will and I shared a car and I was able to walk there every single day, which was awesome because what an easy commute. I was like super blessed, but I hated it. (laughs) I've talked about this before. So being able to like turn in like my two week notice to say that I was going full time was so exciting and the best thing. So that's another instance where like quitting was a very good thing. Yes. Yes, exactly. And look where you are now. So (laughs) ta-da. Crying myself to sleep every night. <laughs> I'm just um, kidding. Then, <laughs> yes. Um, and then oh, only oh some nights. <laughs> oh my gosh. You just calm down. Just calm down. I'm joking. I only cry in the morning after I wake up. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, jeez. Oh my gosh. Anyway, you guys, it's so fun being a business owner. Okay, so and I guess this is kind of like both of us. We can talk about not necessarily quitting, but just like phasing out some parts of your business. Like for you, it was getting rid of the wood signs. You kind of quit that. And then I quit calligraphy work. Uh-huh. And quitting makes it sound so negative. But I think the like better term would be like phased out that part of our business. So Or retired. That's the word I use. I say I retired from wood signs. But honestly, I don't mind saying I quit them because I'm happy I made that decision. I just like phrased it for other people out there. I think I I phrased it as retiring because that sounds so much better. But in my mind, it was like, I know I'm making the decision to quit this because I don't want to do this in my business anymore. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) exactly. Okay, so then you can talk about what you most recently quit, which kind of spurred this whole conversation. Spurred this whole episode because I felt super guilty. And I I still feel a little tinge of, I don't know if it's guilt, but so you guys have heard me talk about like my networking group, which it's called Power Core. And I have nothing against like the organization or the people. And like, I think it's like great for certain businesses and has done, it has done so many people so much good. And that's similar to something like, BNI is another version of this. There's a couple different ones throughout different parts of the country and that people can join. So anyways, I was like in 2019 really looking to start stepping up my in-person networking game and trying to get better at that element in my business and more comfortable with meeting face-to-face rather than just like relying on email or social media. So I joined Power Core. Mm-hmm. And I started at the very beginning of July and I joined it and I was like, I'm going to do this for a year. I was like, I'm committing to this for a year. I kept telling myself that over and over and over, especially because for groups like that, it takes time for people to like really understand your business and what you do. And then to like think of referrals of people, you know, that they could send to you. So anyhow. I was kind of like looking at the numbers for this at the end of 2019. I had been part of it for six months. I had dedicated like 85 hours, I think, between like the weekly meetings and additional coffee meetings outside of those weekly meetings. And that's when I kind of started having the thought of, I don't know if this is how I like want to be spending my time or my money. But half of me was also like, but I told myself I committed to like doing this through, you know, the 1st of July next year or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think I did, I did the month of January. (laughs) And then it was like the first week of February where I had, I had talked to you, Cammie. I had talked to Will. I had talked to my parents and I was like, this isn't the right fit. And it's not because like the people in my group weren't wonderful It was because I think I was able to like strengthen my skills speaking about my own business and then have a better grip on like who I actually need to be talking to. Because instead of like going to these people who a lot of them were in like banking or insurance, accounting, chiropractic, I don't know what type of like, they're like, they're almost like recurring business models in a sense where it's like you can do something for someone annually or like a handyman is always going to have like repeat work from customers. But there was nothing really, no one was like classified in the wedding industry and in the way I was classified. And I was like, I'm spending a lot of time trying to educate these people who have no idea about like what I do. I'm trying to educate them about it and trying to plant the seeds, you know, so that like I can grow referrals and all these like funny little sayings that they use. 
And I was like, what I really need to be doing is like going directly to local wedding vendors. I don't need someone to give me the name of another person. I can do my own research and basically go out of my own way to make these connections if I want it to happen. So I think that was the point for me where I was like, okay, I'm done. I quit. And I like made the announcement at the meeting that I was putting my membership on hold because that's like more of a soft way to transition out of it. Because at this point, I don't think I'm going back. But if I wanted to go back, I still have like two months that I paid for. So I didn't like fully close the door just in case. But yeah, that was like my most recent thing that I quit. And a lot of people had so many questions because they were so curious about it. Like, what is this? How did you find this? How did you do this? And I tried it and I'm proud that I tried it. But (laughs) I was like, I didn't make it the year. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> no, I could tell like when you're talking about it that you was just like weighing you down of all these extra time and things and you weren't like you're putting in a lot of time but not getting a like a ton of result. Like not like yeah. you're getting a lot out of it, but a lot of like tangible results out of it. And I think that was like okay, I you need to like I I tried this and it and it worked okay for what I needed it for and now it's, you know, now it's time to move on. So, yes. And this, I I put this little note of some food for thought because after I like wrote out the things I've quit and some of the good reasons to quit, I was like, I wonder what other people have to say about this topic. I was super curious. So I Googled, literally Googled the phrase, like, when is it okay to quit? And I found this thing on Melissa Griffin's website that I thought was so good because it was a guest blogger for an article but this person wrote we aren't kids anymore with annoyed complaints we are adults full of capable decisions and I love framing it that way because it is true like as kids I think our parents try to instill in us like not to quit something because they're trying to help us build character and they're trying to help us understand boundaries and commitments but I think like as adults we've already been taught what all of that means and we can make a rational decision and not just like an emotional one, which is like oftentimes it's kids. And not feel, feel the guilt. Not feel guilt from quitting that, you know, comes with it when you're a child. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so in essence, like quitting something can often just mean you're choosing something different, a different routine, a different lifestyle, something else in your life. And so in this instance, I was like, I'm choosing to A, have more time to work on my business and B, to go basically what do you call it when it's like well direct to the source I guess I would say yeah yeah skip the middleman basically of this group skip the middleman yes that is totally the right way to think about it I was like these people are all middlemen and it's like I just need to go to the person I want to talk to (laughs) (laughs) exactly so I guess maybe given a ton of examples so in like simpler terms when do you know that it's time to quit Number one. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. <laughs> you hate it and or resent it. So I would say this was very true of like Cammy's like sorority situation. Like you resented like having to be part of all that stuff. Yes, obviously. <laughs> like y'all, I'm not doing this. I'm not going. I just ain't going. So once you get to that point, it's time to say goodbye. Mm-hmm. Okay, so number two, you're only staying because of another person. Like maybe you're in a club or your mom is making you do piano lessons or whatever. <laughs> like now that we're adults, obviously, it's we can make those decisions for ourselves. So, yeah. And this one for me too, like I would say, like I really enjoy the people in my power core group a lot. So, if anything, I kept wanting to stay because of the people. But then I was like, that's not a good enough reason to stay, like just to stay because like I like a couple people in the group, you know? Yeah, exactly. Number three, (laughs) it's affecting your emotional and mental well-being or it's making you physically ill. I think sometimes like when people become so stressed or wound up about something or like physically exhausted that it makes them sick, that's a big warning sign that you might be overextending yourself. Yeah, definitely. Um, And number four, you don't care or on the flip side, you care too much. (laughs) And both extremes can be really difficult. Yeah, I would say like, there are certain instances where if you care too much, it can also be a bad thing. So like, I could imagine myself like if I started volunteering for a cat shelter, like there's a local cat shelter I really want to volunteer for. 
But I'm actually worried that I will care so much <laughs> that it might like it might be a bad balance because then it'll it'll like detract too much, you know, like my focus will always be there or yeah, I think you would be so emotionally like exhausted if you did that because you'd be like, and this little cat, I mean, I kind of really, I really understand this one because I am fostering a cat right now and it's only because I follow this urgent cats page and it got me, it got me, you guys, and I care too much. (laughs) And here I have a broken cat in my house now, but yes, so I think it's, it's a lot when you care too much and then it just (laughs) affects everything, so... Yeah, it affects everything. So either you don't care at all, you care too much, both extremes are bad, or you care so much that it's like sucking, it just sucks all your time and energy. Like maybe you have a certain job that you care about making a good impression, but you're working until 7 or 8 p.m. every night and you don't get to see your kids. Like that's another example of like, it's too much. Yeah. And then number five, just the last one is just, you know, you're ready to move on and you want something different and that's totally okay. Honestly, that is just normal and a part of life. Yeah, exactly. Like my big pivotal moment, that was just me wanting something different. And it was doesn't mean that it wasn't hard or that I disliked what I was doing. It just meant I was ready to try something new. So there's totally a positive outlook to quitting things as well. It's not always negative. Yeah, I think there's actually more positives now, like as adults than negatives. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, so anyhow, those are all of our when it's okay to quit. So, Cami, do you want to say our little like end of episode housekeeping things? I will. If the next thing we're quitting, you guys, is this episode. What? Okay, but seriously. Uh- <laughs> So if you enjoy our episodes, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes. It helps us immensely, you guys, just so darn much. You have no idea. Okay, so do that. And then if you're still like befumbled and you want to know what some answers, some questions, you can go to bizbirthdaybash.com forward slash Q and cake and submit your questions there. And we answer those um, in our Q and cake episodes every five weeks yes it's every five i'm doing it again (laughs) i did it okay so every five weeks we do our live q and cake episodes so yeah thank you guys so much for listening and we'll see you next week see you next week bye hey there fellow stationers are you creating custom invitations and still sending a lackluster contract that's hacked together with google searches and generic templates we've got you We've created a custom stationary contract written for stationers by stationers, and it is lawyer reviewed and approved. Hashtag legal rockstar. The custom stationary contract template covers every stationary snafu, protects you and your client's interests, and sets up an expectation of professionalism. We've combined our previous contracts as well as years of experience to bring you a contract that covers your booty and your biz. Become a put together pro and breathe a sigh of relief knowing that you have a contract that is easy to understand and avoids confusing legal jargon. The custom stationary contract template is only $297, which is much less than what you can expect to pay anywhere else. And it's written by two gals who have seen it all. Spoiler alert, it's us. It's time to do things right. Go to bizbirthdaybash.com forward slash contract to purchase and download your copy today. And as a special treat, use code PODCAST2020 to get $20 off. And that's PODCAST, all caps, 2020 to get $20 off. Woohoo!